2 Message to the Churches, Part 1 Revelation 2, 129 Drawing near in the vision, Jesus instructs John to write letters to various churches. If Jesus were to send a message to your local church, what things might he commend your church for? Rebuke you for? Why do you think so? Your response here How would you define the term Christian? Your response here The context in his book The Mark of the Christian, theologian Francis Schaffer once observed, the meaning of the word Christian has been reduced to practically nothing. Because the word Christian as a symbol has been made to mean so little, it has come to mean everything and nothing. The term Christian in contemporary usage can mean anyone who is not Jewish, anyone who lives in a Christian nation, as opposed, for example, to a Buddhist or an Islamic one, or anyone who claims any kind of allegiance to Jesus Christ. Though the world may be confused about what a Christian is, the Bible is clear. Christians are those who are united to God through saving faith in Jesus Christ and thus are members of his body, the church. The seven churches addressed in chapters 2 and 3 were real churches when John lived. Five of the seven churches were rebuked for tolerating sin in their midst, not an uncommon occurrence in many churches. The problems in those churches ranged in severity from waning love at Ephesus to total apostasy at Laodicea. They weren't living like real Christians should. It is important for readers to understand that any church in any age can have a mixture of the sins that plagued these five churches. Or it can persevere and be commended as were the churches at Smyrna and Philadelphia. Keys to the text The church, God's people, the universal body of believers as well as the local group of believers. The church is the body of Christ, Rom. 12, 5. This metaphor depicts the church not as an organization but as a living organism composed of mutually related and interdependent parts. Christ is head of the body and the Holy Spirit is its lifeblood, as it were. The body functions through the faithful use of its members' various spiritual gifts, sovereignly and uniquely bestowed by the Holy Spirit on each believer. Because Christians are part of the body of Christ, have been spiritually gifted by the Holy Spirit, and are edified through other believers, they should not continue to live like the ungodly. Unleashing the text read 2, 129, noting the keywords and definitions next to the passage. Revelation 2, 129, NKJV 1 To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, angel, v. 1 the elder or pastor from the church Ephesus, v. 1. This was an inland city three miles from the sea, but the broad mouth of the Caister River allowed access and provided the greatest harbour in Asia Minor. Four great trade roads went through Ephesus, therefore, it became known as the Gateway to Asia. It was the centre of the worship of Artemis, Greek, or Diana, Roman, whose temple was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Paul ministered there for three years, Acts 20, 31, and later met with the Ephesian elders on his way to Jerusalem, Acts 20. Timothy, Tychicus, and the Apostle John all served this church. John was in Ephesus when he was arrested by Domitian and exiled 50 miles southwest to Patmos. 2 I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars, who say they are apostles, v. 2, the Ephesian church exercised spiritual discernment. It knew how to evaluate men who claimed spiritual leadership, judging them by their doctrine and behavior. 3 And you have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Not become weary, v. 3, for over forty years, since its founding this church had remained faithful to the Word and the Lord. Through difficulty and persecution, the members had endured, always driven by the right motive, that is, Christ's name and reputation. For nevertheless I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Left your first love, v. 4, to be a Christian is to love the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Ephesians' passion and fervor for Christ had become cold, mechanical orthodoxy. 
their doctrinal and moral purity, their undiminished zeal for the truth, and their disciplined service were no substitute for the love for Christ they had forsaken. 5. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Remove your lampstand, v. 5. God's judgment would bring an end to the Ephesian church. 6. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The deeds of the Nicolaitans, v. 6. A problem in Pergamos also, vv. 12.15, this heresy was similar to the teaching of Balaam, vv. 14.15. Nicholas means one who conquers the people. Irenaeus writes that Nicholas, who was made a deacon in Acts 6, was a false believer who later became apostate. Because of his credentials he was able to lead the church astray, and, like Balaam, he led the people into immorality and wickedness. The Nicolaitans, followers of Nicholas, were involved in immorality and assaulted the church with sensual temptations. Clement of Alexander says, they abandoned themselves to pleasure like goats, leading a life of self, indulgence. Their teaching perverted grace and replaced liberty with license. 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Him who overcomes, v. 7, according to John's own definition, to be an overcomer is to be a Christian, cvv. 11, 17, 26, 3, 5, 12, 21. Tree of Life, v. 7, True believers enjoy the promise of heaven, see notes on 22, 2, Gen. 2, 9. 8 And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead, and came to life, Smyrna, v. 8, Smyrna means myrrh, the substance used for perfume and often for anointing a dead body for aromatic purposes. Called the crown of Asia, this ancient city, modern Izmir, Turkey, was the most beautiful in Asia Minor and a center of science and medicine. Always on the winner's side in the Roman wars, Smyrna's intense loyalty to Rome resulted in a strong emperor, worship cult. Fifty years after John's death, Polycarp, the bishop or pastor of the church in Smyrna, was burned alive at the age of 80, six for refusing to worship Caesar. A large Jewish community in the city also proved hostile to the early church. 9. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich, and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Who say they are Jews, v. 9. Although they were Jews physically, they were not true Jews but spiritual pagans, see Rom. 2. 28. Who allied with other pagans in putting Christians to death as they attempted to stamp out the Christian faith. Synagogue of Satan, v. 9. With the rejection of its Messiah, Judaism becomes as much a tool of Satan as emperor worship. 10. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Devil, v. 10. The Greek name for God's archenemy means accuser. Tribulation ten days, v. 10. Their imprisonment will be brief. Crown of life, v. 10. It is the crown which is life or the reward which is life, not an actual crown to adorn the head. Crown here does not refer to the kind royalty wear, but to the wreath awarded to winning athletes. 11 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Who overcomes, v. 11, this identifies every Christian, see note on v. 7. The second death, v. 11, the first death is only physical, the second is spiritual and eternal, c. 20, 14. 12 And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, 
these things says he who has the sharp two, edged sword, Pergamos, v. 12, Pergamos literally means citadel and is the word from which we get parchment or writing material developed from animal skin, which apparently was first developed in that area. Pergamos, modern Bergama, was built on a thousand, foothill in a broad, fertile plain about twenty miles inland from the Aegean Sea. It had served as the capital of the Roman province of Asia Minor for over 250 years. It was an important religious center for the pagan cults of Athena, Asclepios, Dionysus, or Bacchus, the god of drunkenness, and Zeus. It was the first city in Asia to build a temple to Caesar, 29 BC, and became the capital of the cult of Caesar worship. 13 I know your works, and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. Where Satan's throne is, v. 13, this was the headquarters of satanic opposition and a gentile base for false religions. On the Acropolis in Pergamos was a huge, throne, shaped altar to Zeus. In addition, Asclepios, the god of healing, was the god most associated with Pergamos. His snake, like form is still the medical symbol today. The famous medical school connected to his temple mingled medicine with superstition. One prescription called for the worshipper to sleep on the temple floor, allowing snakes to crawl over his body and infuse him with their healing power. Antipas, v. 13, probably the pastor of the church faithful martyr, v. 13, tradition says Antipas was burned to death inside a brass bowl. Martyr, a transliteration of the Greek word, means witness. Because so many of the witnesses faithful to Christ were put to death, the word martyr developed its current definition. 14 But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Doctrine of Balaam, v. 14, Balaam tried unsuccessfully to prostitute his prophetic gift and curse Israel for money offered him by Balak, king of Moab. So he devised a plot to have Moabite women seduce Israelite men into intermarriage. The result was the blasphemous union of Israel with fornication and idolatrous feasts, for the story of Balaam, see number. 22:25. 15 Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Thus you also, v. 15, the teaching of the Nicolaitans led to the same behavior as Balaam's schemes. 16 Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. 17 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. Hidden manna, v. 17, just as Israel received manna, God promises to give the true believer the spiritual bread the unbelieving world cannot see, Jesus Christ, see John 6, 51. White stone, v. 17, when an athlete won in the games, he was often given as part of his prize a white stone, which was an admission pass to the winner's celebration afterwards. This may depict the moment when the overcomer will receive his ticket to the eternal victory celebration in heaven. New Name, v. 17, a personal message from Christ to the ones he loves, which serves as their admission pass into eternal glory. It is so personal that only the person who receives it will know what it is. 18 And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass, Thyatira, v. 18, located halfway between Pergamos and Sardis, this city had been under Roman rule for nearly three centuries, about 190 BC. Since the city was situated in a long valley that swept 40 miles to Pergamos, it had no natural defenses and had a long history of being destroyed and rebuilt. Originally populated by soldiers of Alexander the Great, 
it was little more than a military outpost to guard Pergamos. Lydia came from this city on business and was converted under Paul's ministry, Acts 16, 14 15. 19 I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience, and as for your works, the last are more than the first. 20 Nevertheless I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Jezebel, v. 20, probably a pseudonym for a woman who influenced the church in the way Jezebel influenced the Old Testament Jews into idolatry and immorality, see 1 Kings 21, 25 26. 21 And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. 22 Indeed I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. Sickbed, v. 22, this is literally bed. Having given this woman time to repent, God was to judge her upon a bed. Since she used a luxurious bed to commit her immorality, and the reclining couch at the idol feast to eat things offered to false gods, he was to give her a bed in hell where she would lie forever. 23 I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Her children, v. 23, the church was about 40 years old as John wrote this book, and her teaching had produced a second generation, advocating the same debauchery. Who searches the minds and hearts? v. 23, God has perfect, intimate knowledge of every human heart, no evil can be hidden from him, p.s. 7, 9, prov. 24, 12, g. 11, 20, 17, 10, 20, 12. According to your works, v. 23, works do not save, f. 2, 8, 9, however, they do evidence salvation, James 2, 14, 26, and we will be judged in the future by them, 20, 12, 13, Matt. 16, 27, Rom. 2, 6. 24 Now to you I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden. The depths of Satan, v. 24, this unbelievable libertinism and license was the fruit of pre, Gnostic teaching, saying that one was free to engage and explore the sphere of Satan and participate in evil with the body without harming the spirit. 25 But hold fast what you have till I come. 26 And he who overcomes, and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. 27 He shall rule them with a rod of iron, they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels as I also have received from my father, rule them with a rod of iron, v. 27, literally shepherd them with an iron rod. During the Millennial Kingdom, Christ will enforce his will and protect his sheep with his iron scepter from any who would seek to harm them, cps. 2, 9. 28 And I will give him the morning star. The morning star, v. 28, John later reveals Christ to be the morning star. Although the morning star has already dawned in our hearts, 2 Pet. 1, 19, someday we will have him in his fullness. 29 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. 1, what commendations did Christ have for the church at Ephesus? For what sin did he rebuke them? Your response here, verses to consider. Acts 18, 19 21, 19, 135, 20, 17 38, 2, What situation did the church at Smyrna face? What did God promise them? How do these facts square with the expectations of most Western Christians? Your response here, verses to consider, Acts 14, 22, 2 Tim. 3, 12, James 1, 2 4, 1 Pet. 5, 10, 3, What was the great sin of the church of Pergamos? 
Your response here for, summarize Christ's message for the church at Thyatira. Your response here 5, note the varied descriptions Jesus gives of himself, vv. 1, 8, 12, 18. What do these reveal about him? Your response here 6, review Jesus commands to each church, vv. 5, 10, 16, 25. How do Jesus' commands fit the problem he exposed in each church? Your response here going deeper unfaithfulness and hypocrisy among God's people is nothing new. For more insight about how the world can affect the church, read 1 John 2, 15 17. 15 Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 16 For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. 17 And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Exploring the meaning 7, how is the world system defined in this passage? What does it mean to love the world? Your response here 8, what antidote does 1 John 2 provide to guard against being led astray, like the church of Pergamos was? Your response here 9, read Matthew 18, 15 17. Why is it so important for the church to address sin in its midst? What is the right way to do this, according to Christ's teaching? Your response here truth for today for many people in today's church, the term worldliness has a quaint, old, fashioned ring to it. They associate it with prohibitions against things like dancing, going to the movies, or playing cards. Today's user, friendly, seeker, oriented, market, driven church doesn't preach much against worldliness. To do so might make unbelievers, not to mention many believers, uncomfortable, and is therefore avoided as poor marketing strategy. But unlike much of the contemporary church, the Bible does not hesitate to condemn worldliness for the serious sin that it is. Worldliness is any preoccupation with or interest in the temporal system of life that places anything perishable before that which is eternal. Reflecting on the text 10, how has this passage added to or changed your view of what a real Christian is? Your response here 11, what worldly attitudes or actions do you find yourself struggling with the most? What principles from Revelation 2, 12 17 offer you hope for change? Your response here 12, what counsel would you give to a Christian friend who confessed that he or she had lost their first love for Christ? Your response here 13, Jesus urged, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. What keeps you from hearing God's voice? Ask him to help you slow down and learn how to hear him, and then obey. Your response here personal response write out additional reflections, questions you may have, or a prayer.